All right, everybody, Dr. O here. I actually want to cover, I like to do this quickly where we cover lab safety rules, regulations, and procedures prior to you coming to your first lab. Just because, you know, to me, my motto is always preparation is the key when it comes to microbiology labs, knowing what you're, get, you're getting yourself into and coming prepared. So talking about these things the first day is a problem because we're already in our first lab, so you may not have known things. But uh, so let me walk you through, this is just the basic rules of microbiology lab safety. Number one, no food or drinks are in the lab at any time. Now, that's when we're doing lab stuff. You know, I teach hybrid classes or, uh, you know, a lot of times the first 20 or 30 minutes, we're just, we're talking and going over questions and that kind of thing. If you've got a piece of gum in your mouth, or you're drinking something, when you first come in, that's fine. But then we switch gears. When we get into the lab, I like to say when the bacteria come out, when the Bunsen burners get turned on, when those kind of things happen, you get rid of everything. You put it to the edge of the classroom or you just get rid of it. Um, only closed toed shoes are to be worn in the laboratory. That's because we're working with microorganisms, glass, you know, stains, chemicals, etc. So generally I don't recommend wearing your, your favorite clothes because you can get some stinky bacteria on them and you also can get stains on them and stuff. And I've never had anything ruined, but I think it's just, it's just smart to, uh, you know, not wear your favorite shoes, etc. But they should be, there should be closed toes. So no open toed shoes. Number three, Keep hands and other objects away from your face, nose, eyes, ears, and mouth. That's because, you know, if there's any potential for contamination on your fingers, you don't want to be putting, moving those microbes to your face. Studies show that the more often you touch your face, the more likely you are to get sick. That's because your hands are disgusting. Let's be honest. You know, we have a picture up in the lab of the 10 most common causes of infection or sources of infection are your 10 fingers. So, um... Unless you're doing like heavy makeouts, right? You can you can transfer, you know, a 10 second real makeouty passionate kiss can transfer about 80 million bacteria. But uh, um, no making out in the lab either. But uh, uh, so that's the whole point of keeping th keeping your hands away from your face because your hands are disgusting. <laughs> Let's be real. So I I mean I trust me. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm always stroking my goatee, and I know that's not a good thing. But uh, uh, four application of cosmetics or handling of contact lenses is prohibited for the same reason. You just don't want to be contaminating your own face and your eyes while you're in a microbiology lab. Number four, work areas slash surfaces must be disinfected before and after using dis disinfectant provided in the lab. So I like to use hydrogen peroxide. You know, like in the online labs and stuff, they 10% uh, bleach. Some people say 20% bleach. But personally, I like, uh, I don't have any stock in the company, but I like the Lysol with hydrogen peroxide. We test it in the lab all the time and it works really well. If not, like I'll tell you what we do at home. We just we buy the the, the brown bottles of three percent hydrogen peroxide, and my wife puts some essential oils in it, and we put a squirter on the top, and that's what we use for almost everything. Excuse me. So before and after lab, you disinfect. Other times you would is if there's contamination. So before every lab, after every lab, or anytime there's a spill or contamination, that's when, that's 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 when we clean. All right, number five, long hair should be secured behind your head. Um, just because we're working with fire, I, if you have long hair, I don't want it getting dipped in bacteria or starting on fire. So that's why it's very important that you keep your hair. You shouldn't be hovering over, um, you know, containers of bacteria or Bunsen burners anyhow, but your hair should be back. All right, number eight, hands must be washed before working in the lab and upon leaving the lab with the hand soap in the sink. So uh, you, you should, it makes sense, you should clean your counters but also wash your hands before and after every lab. Same thing, you should also wash your hands if there's contamination. So you when you, when you come into a microbiology lab, you wash your hands, disinfect the table. Before you leave, disinfect the table and wash your hands and then leave. Um, if there's a contamination, you wash your hands and disinfect the table. So, all right, number nine, all unnecessary books, purses, books, ba book bags, et cetera, must be kept off the countertops. I have you get rid of everything, whether you, no matter what lab you're in, if you're working in your home with this kind of stuff, doesn't matter. You, if you don't need it, you move it. it. Your your bags are up against the wall. You don't even bring it with you if you don't need it. These kind of things. So what should be at what should be at your lab bench should be whatever you're working with. Maybe your lab manual. That's about it. So if you don't need it, you don't even want it under your feet because because you could trip and you, tripping into a bunsen burner is a terrible idea. So if you don't need it, it's gone. You get it as far away from you as you can. Number ten. Never pipette anything by mouth, including water. Always use pipetting devices. So if you have to, um, you know, you, there's, you're not siphoning gas in here. So that there's just too much risk there. So that's why whenever we use, we, we need to move liquids, we're going to use pipettes or loops or whatever. You're never, never going to use your mouth. Nothing should be in your mouth in a microbiology lab. So.
All right, 11, label all material with your name, date, any other applicable information. So what kind of media? What that means is, was it a regular nutrient auger or starch auger plate? What organism? Was it E. coli or Staph aureus we were working with? And then, you know, make sure if you're, if you're in a large group, you have to make sure whose is whose. So we'll use group identifiers and these kind of things. So I will, I will tell you what you need to label on any lab um, each time. Number 12, dispose of waste in their proper containers as dictated by the instructor, if in doubt, ask. And that's because, um, you know, you you might have to disinfect something with bleach or put it in an autoclave bag. You might be able to throw it in the garbage. You might, you might have to go into a broken glass container or a sharps container. I will always try to let you know what you should be doing with, with everything. So uh, when in doubt, I have you just bring things to the front of the room and I'll deal with it. But um, I like that. Just if in doubt or when in doubt, ask. That's, that's the best advice I can give you for a microbiology lab. If you have a question, I don't want you going into things blind. That's why coming prepared, being prepared is so important. But if you have questions, please never hesitate to ask. Um, the other thing you're going to get tired of hearing me say in a microbiology lab is, uh, it's an old quote from John Wooden. Uh, he got he won like 10 national titles with UCLA. He, he said, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? Never rush in a microbiology lab. If you make a mistake 45 minutes in and you got to start over, that's way worse than asking me, hey, Dr. O, what should we do here? I don't quite understand, et cetera. So just be careful. 13, return all chemicals, reagents, cultures, and glassware to their appropriate places. That's going to depend on the lab, depend on what we're using. Do not pour cultures of any kind down the sink. So, without, well, you know, if you if you disinfect it first, then you can, but uh, with ten percent bleach or hydrogen peroxide or something. But when in doubt, don't. And um, I'll tell you what to do. Like in the physical lab, you'll bring the liquids up to me. We'll actually run them through a machine, the autoclave, which uses pressurized steam to sterilize them. Then they go in the trash. All right. Um, 15, flame transfer loops, wires, or needles before and immediately after use to transfer biological material. So if you're going to use a, use a loop or something to transfer microorganisms, you, you sterilize it first, you use it, then you sterilize it again. So you don't want to use them when they're covered in other microbes. That's why you sterilize it first. But you don't want to leave them covered in microbes either, which is why you sterilize it after. 16, do not walk about the laboratory with transfer loops, wires, needles, or pipettes containing infectious material. Always carry cultures and store cultures in a test tube rack while working in the lab. You should never be roaming around the lab with anything like that. You'll do your work right in front of you, and you should always know what you're doing. Um, you shouldn't, ha you shouldn't you know, get a loop full of an organism or something and then look at me and wonder what's going on and walk around the room. So that's where, again, coming prepared and knowing what you're doing is so important. 17. Be careful around Bunsen burners. Flames cannot always be seen. So, so you know, the, you've got uh, um, your real hot flames. That, you know, they might be blue, but they might you might have a hard time seeing them. So, um, when not using the burner, turn it off as it could be a fire hazard and it's unnecessary source of heat in the room. So, um, you're, if a Bunsen burner is on, you know, for you need or any sort of flame is being used, you should turn it on, use it, and turn it off. So, and always be extra careful around it. All right, eighteen. Immediately report any broken glass, especially those containing infectious materials, and disinfect it if a spill occurs. So let me know if there's a if there's a problem. If there is, this leads into the next one, next one though. Cover any spilled cultures with paper towels and soak the towel with disinfectant. Report the spill to the instructor. So if you spill something, here's what I want you to do. If you get contaminated yourself, you know, let's say you're working in a group of people. If you get contaminated, you should be washing your hands. Someone else should get paper towel and coat it with disinfectant whether it be the Lysol with hydrogen peroxide, regular hydrogen peroxide, 10% um, bleach, whatever, and lay that on the spill because you don't want to spray the cleaner on the spill because it'll splatter it around. So that's why you do it that way. And then, uh, then I can help you work through that. Uh, 20, if you're injured in the laboratory, immediately contact the instructor. Of course, I need to know that and I will do everything I can to help you. Uh, 21, all glass generated in the lab that is not to be reused should go in the designated broken glass container. So we have a, just a five-gallon pail over by the fire extinguisher I can see right now. That's where broken glass goes, but when in doubt, ask me. 22, familiarize yourself with safety equipment in the lab and emergency escape routes. So if you're in uh, the lab in, in Sioux City, of, you know, of course, we've got labs. Um, I, I teach labs at other campuses, and some people are doing things like this at home. But you should always know... Uh, where's your fire extinguisher? If you have a fire blanket, you know, in, in a lab like this, we have eye wash stations, showers, fire blankets, fire extinguishers, and three exits. We also have, uh, you know, hoods and uh, stuff like that. So uh, you should always know, you know, just, just, just to be careful. If you're going to be working with fire, you should have, a, you should have your fire extinguisher nearby and these kind of things. Um, 
All right, uh, 23, always wipe and clean the lenses of your microscope before, before putting it away, being very aware of removing any oil on the objective and the stage. So when we get the microscopes out, we can use, uh, you know, Kim wipes or lens cleaning tissues to make sure they're clean. But you should always do that before you leave too, especially in microbiology because we're using oil immersion. So you're actually going to be coating at least one of your objectives with oil. And the other, the, you know, other objectives get oil on them sometimes too. And that can be a real problem. So it's very important that you leave your microscopes as clean or cleaner than you found them. We'll, we'll, we'll cover the lab, uh, microscope safety and use uh, in, in a lab. All right, 24, do not remove any materials from the laboratory. I think it goes without saying. So we, we don't work with things that are super dangerous, but it's just, it's just we, we act as if. Like uh, from a biological safety level, almost everything we work with is BSL-1, which means no precautions are needed. The organisms on your skin are more dangerous. And then we have BSL-2, which mild precautions are needed. But um, we're still going to act as if. There are, such a, there are things like opportunistic pathogens that, um, even though they're not very strong organisms, can, can cause problems if they get in the wrong location, like into a cut, things like that. So I just I want you to be super duper careful, even though we're not working with really, really scary organisms. It's just when in doubt, be extra careful. Number 25, just about done here. In general, non-contaminated items, 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 whatever those are, items that pose no threat and items that are not sharp or capable of causing injury can be disposed of by placing them in the trash. So what can go in the trash can? Gloves that have just had stain on them can go in the trash can. Um, the packaging we got things out of can go in the trash can. If it has touched a bacteria, if it has touched a microorganism, it goes in the autoclave bag. It, you know, or, or, or it comes up to me and I deal with it. So the only thing, so when in doubt, ask, but the only things that have never touched a microorganism can go in the trash can. All right, 26, wear gloves when working with bacteria. Let me know if you have a latex allergy. So we have nitrile gloves anyways, but um, um, you shouldn't have any problems with the gloves we use. So I think that will be it. All right, so that's the basics of lab safety, but rule number one, I should, it's not on here, but rule number one is to come prepared. Know what we're gonna do. Do your, you know, be prepared, have everything laid out. That's why even though you do all the lab prep and I can check your work and make sure you've been through the lab and answered all the questions, I still walk you through every step you need to do um, before you do a lab. So, so knowing what you're doing and doing things in the right order at the right time is the key to an effective lab where we, where we get the results we want, but also a safe lab. So if you have any questions, let me know.